my name is Hachi and this is Zero to Scale, a video series where we talk to established African founders about how they built their startups from scratch. On today's episode, I have with me AK Urum, the CEO and founder of RiseVest. How are you doing? Okay. I'm doing great. You're looking good. <laughs> Thank you very much. His hair is like, is on point. I like it. I'd do it, but my parents would disown me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't disown you for this, so. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know about that. I mean, RiseVest has been one of my favorite companies for a very long time, but so I don't give away too much. Can you give like a snapshot of what RiseVest is? Sure. Um, so, Rise uh, is a digital wealth manager that allows anybody to invest in exclusively dollar denominated assets. Um, and we, there's an impression that our assets are mostly um, foreign, but we do have a number of local um, investment options. But the idea is to give you easy access to dollar investments, mm. manage the portfolios for you, help you select the assets, and then basically give you the benefits of expert investment management, all in a very simple app that anybody can access with just one dollar. So that's that's what rises. Okay, so if, I, if I'm not a very financially savvy person, how would you describe it to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so think about it like this. Everybody wants to invest, but not everyone has the expertise and the knowledge to know what the right investments are. Mm -hmm. So RISE finds the assets, make sure they're in dollars because their long-term performance is better, mm -hmm. and then you give us your money and we put it in the assets that we believe are going to make sense for you in the long term. That's mm. Yeah, that's fantastic. It. I'm curious as to what made you go for, um, say, what essentially is a wealth manager slash hedge fund model as opposed to a digital broker, which some other companies decide to go with? Yeah. So um, the funny thing was when, when I started thinking about, uh, about what is now Rise, um, my original thought was that we were going to go the same, you know, um, the way they, in the general play is the Robin Hood for Africa model, you know, so you get in and you buy the, the stocks that you want. Um, but we started to study what made sense for our potential users. And just the data showed that um, most people, when they trade by themselves, um, they tend to buy either what is very popular mm -hmm. or what is in the news, what they're excited about. Um, and sometimes those things don't make very good investments, right? So um, they might be good to own and you feel like this sense of, oh yeah, I'm doing something with my money. But when you look at the long-term performance, mm -hmm. Um, it's usually very negative. So we, we knew that we had a lot of expertise and we knew that we can build a bench of people who look at the markets objectively. We have um, a bunch of algorithms that we use to filter out um, the investment criteria for each stock. So there are companies that I don't necessarily knew, know them before, but because they go through our process, we realize that, oh, these are solid investments. And for us, we realize that that's the model that will make sure that users' performance is going to be better. Um, and that's all that's all it is about at the end of the day so there's no point giving a user something that might you know be exciting but does not give them the long-term growth that they need so that was one of the first reasons the second reason is that when you trade by yourself i think you you spend a lot more because every time you buy you pay a fee anytime you sell you pay a fee um, by using our model it's much cheaper um, so not only are you getting better performance, but you're also spending less on fees. You're also better able to stick to a plan. So all of those things made our model the better uh, option. And so that's why, that's why we chose it. I want to backtrack a bit and ask, how did you even get into this, into, into the investment business? Hmm. In a way, it's always something I, I, I figured I would always do. My interest in investment started early. It started actually maybe from my father. He invested in all the popular blue chip companies in Nigeria back then. So from a young age, I'll you know, read annual reports, we'll talk about dividends, we'll talk about all those things. Um, so I grew up knowing, in fact, secondary school, there was a period when the IPO craze of like 2005, six, you know, I invested in a bunch of those with money I made um, from allowances and like doing things on the side. Lost a lot of money then, but I was 16, 17, so it didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, once I moved into college, I went to university, I started out studying political science, thought I was going to be a lawyer, but I switched my major to finance and accounting by my second year of university. 
Um, and it was just like a light bulb went out. Like, it's like, this is what I've, I've been missing. I took to that, I started doing it from college. And then when I graduated, I worked in the financial services industry. Um, I worked for a couple consulting firms. Um, I advised a few investment banks and hedge funds, um, mainly around like their portfolio planning and stuff like that. And then when it was time, I, actually what triggered then starting Rise was while we were in the US, um, paying attention to the macro game in Nigeria, what was going on with the markets, what was going on with the dollars, and starting to realize that there was a rhythm to devaluation, right? And it came from both the way that the Naira value is being managed, came from a lot of things, but the overall implication is that it's very, very hard to successfully invest in Naira or by yourself in Nigeria. I'm thinking about what a good solution for that was, um, was what then led me to, um, to finally start um, Rise. So um, it was a long journey, it was a very iterative process, um, but once I landed on the fact that this is something we were gonna do, then I moved back to Lagos, um, first to, do, to work on a previous company in the crypto space, but eventually then um, full time to do. To do buy coins. Yeah, that was buy coins, yeah. So we did buy coins for a couple of years. Um, and then we started, um, we actually started as cash estates because we offered real estate, but users wanted more than real estate. So by the time we put all the other asset classes and built a mobile application, um, we, we then renamed the company as Rise. I'm curious because I have seen cash estates on, I think your LinkedIn before. What was cash estate like? in terms of operations. So when we when we launched the first offering we we we, uh, we have so now it's it's in our real estate plan on rise but it's basically to aggregate um funds going you know converted to dollars by rental properties in the US um, and it was kind of like a mix of you know there was a digital flow but there was also a lot of manual stuff being done um, and when we first built it it was a dex, uh, desktop uh, web application there were segments of people who started using the minimum was a thousand dollars because we also didn't want to manage too many people right up front right but when we when we aggregated we, we went as far as getting up to say two hundred thousand um, in assets under management, but we saw that a lot of the traffic coming into the platform was from mobile um, mobile browsers, and, and, and we started to study, okay, what are the, where are more, more people who are interested in this? Um, where do they want this application on? Another thing is we also started interviewing a lot of those early users, um, and we understood that, you know, yes, we like the real estate option. They understood it immediately. Most people in Nigeria are very familiar with the idea of aggregating capital, buying yes. properties, and then getting a split of the returns. But they're like, we still want um, equities. Um, at the time, I also have privately managed uh, some funds for a, a small group of friends in the equities market, and the performance was great. So they were like, oh, yeah, we want um, equities as well. We want exposure to U.S. equities and other markets. Um, we want something fixed. So there was just a lot of variety of things. So we studied all those different things. And then the three things that we did that made us switch to Rise was one, we wanted a name that was more universal, more inclusive, and also communicated what we are trying to achieve in one in a, in a nutshell and rise you know captured that perfectly secondly we built a mobile application because that's where more people were and that's how they wanted to interact with our offering and then thirdly we had to like re redo the entire process to make it more digital driven we outsourced the management of the real estate we outsourced the management of the portfolios and focused on constructing figuring out data driven ways of actually uh, vetting these assets and you know that's made it easier for us to build a scalable product. So that was when, um, that was ending of 2019, that was when we then announced the rebrand um, that made it rise. And once we did that, I think things just took off. You made a point about how, sorry with real estate, but people were asking for a number of things. As of the last time I checked, Rise offered three main class, um, asset classes, real estate, uh, US securities. Yes, and, and uh, then fixed income. Fixed income. Um, now. My, my question is, how were you able to figure that out and just say, see, these are the three we're going to offer? Funny enough, when we were about to start, we wanted to add a venture, venture asset class, and we're still also kicking around, you know, adding private equity um, as an asset class. But the, the, three, the main thing was basically, how do we digitalize the process of investing in these assets? So some asset classes were easier than others to create a digital process for. So fixed income, you know, it does, there's not a lot of moving parts. Equity markets, again, very liquid. 
straightforward processes, even the real estate one, which was the, the hardest one to create a process for. But that was, again, there were some models in place that we could copy. Um, but yeah, the idea is just how do we make it so that we don't have to do a lot of manual stuff, right? And so for the other asset classes that people asked for, commodities and the rest, there was still a lot of manual work that needed to be done. And so we couldn't build it in. Um, but as we've grown and as, as the landscape has changed, for instance, now um, having you know evergreen venture funds, the way you can rotate capital in and out is becoming more and more common. So now I think it might be easier to digitalize. I mean, there's a few companies that are now creating a digital structure around that asset class. So there's a few other asset classes that are now starting to look more plausible and that we can eventually add into the product. But the, the core of, of what we did at Rise was to tell people that, you know, investing is about not just how well you pick investments, but it's also how well you spread your assets. The vision is, I don't know if you know this company, Blackstone. Yeah, 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 Blackstone, so, yeah the biggest. Blackstone, yeah. So they're one of the biggest wealth management companies. Four and they trillion. have a very, yeah, they have, four trillion is BlackRock. It's BlackRock. Yeah, okay. Blackstone is somewhere in the 800 billion um, to, to 1 trillion level. But what I love about their model is they have almost every asset class imaginable under one umbrella. So there's equities, there's debts, there's real estate, there's crypto, there's venture. And so for you, if you're a Blackstone client, wherever it makes sense for your money, Blackstone can get you there. And that's the, that's the vision we have for RISE. We want to get to a point where um, any asset class you want to invest in across with alternatives or traditional or crypto and the rest of them, that you have one platform where you not only have um, the access to all of these, but you also have a manager that can direct that access and tell you, this is what makes sense for you, for where you are right now. This is what does not make sense for you where you are right now. So that it just takes the burden off of like thinking about how to invest. It makes it just easy, one touch. So that's a very interesting bit about having a personal manager. I remember when I first signed up on Rise, I think it was, a year ago, two years ago, I can't remember. Nice. Uh, what? And I said, that's nice. You're, you're an old time user now. I wanted to make some investments. And then I got asked a couple of questions. Um, what I earned, when, what age I hope to retire. Um, how, let me see if I can see my buy the one. Um, how much <laughs> I hope to risk have. Appetite. Yeah, then my risk appetite. I'm like, bro, take all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from early days at, at, at Rise. Um, Rise has come a long way since... It says it launched. Oh, sorry. They said it's not launched. I was talking with the founder the other day, <laughs> and they said we, we, I shouldn't use launch for products because launch date is tricky and tech mm. products don't really launch. I mean, you just go live. <laughs> oh, you know, that's actually a good way of thinking, of putting it, because we did have, we went, we went into beta in November of 2019, and then so, so several people were using it, and then we went live um, January of 2020. So yeah, that's I can I can see what he meant. Yeah, I'm interested in knowing what the levers are that you you've applied to just help go right so far. Yeah, we're about two years in, two years plus. So January would make it three. One of the things that we we have going for us is I think we launched at the right time. We launched at a time when the markets really needed what Rise had to offer. So it it helped um, push us out there very quickly. Um, the second, I think, is we leaned into um, talking to our, our customers, both current customers and future ones, um, to try and understand what their primary needs are. Um, so the product has evolved a bit, but it hasn't changed too much, too dramatically, actually. And um, there are some changes that are now um, coming upstream, but there were things that, yes, we had them in mind, but we wanted to make sure that um, users understood what we've already given them and we understand how they use it before we added to a lot of things. So I think talking to customers helped a lot. Having a very clear identity, because um, I remember the early days um, having conversations with my marketing team about how we were positioning our, our products, right? It's like there's a lot of companies doing something similar. So it has to be clear to users why rise is different and what we are trying to achieve um, and putting that front and center you know we're helping you manage we're giving you global assets but also local assets all in dollars and um, making sure that when we talk to users before we make major changes we try to talk to users we try to understand and a combination of that and just um, landing at the right time um, all added to us being able to to get to where we are and 
to me, I still think we're, we're, we're just getting started. Fair enough. It's always day one. You like to say that, tech founders. <laughs> now, uh, curious about timing. You, you launched, uh, sorry, you went live very early 2020. That was just before the pandemic. And then the pandemic came with um, very <sighs> incredible, I think, oh boy. <laughs> say for the markets we're seeing now, I don't even think the market now was as chaotic as the pandemic oh, market. No, no. The it's, pandemic market was utter chaos. It was crazy. And I know there were, were, they were low lows and almost instantly they were high highs. Yep. And there was yep. a lot of frenzy around investing, getting into the market at the right time. I know, I know biotech investments were going crazy. Were going yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. And I'm wondering, what was the impact of this on Rise's numbers? The, the pandemic really impacted the, the markets, global markets around March of 2020, so late February, early March. And this was just when we had, you know, started growing. Um, so it hit our portfolios. Our users, you know, saw a lot of negative returns, especially those that were in the um, equities uh, plan or people that were in that asset class stocks. Um, so first thing is we, we've always communicated the fact that when you're invested in stocks, there's always the potential the markets can go down by a lot at any time. We tell people that it's not a, it's not a good reason to then you know stay away from the market because it always bounces back. Um, sometimes you know it presents a good buying opportunity, and so the good thing was that it didn't last very long. So it gave it almost like gave people a case study because a lot of people who stuck with us and and actually step, kept investing throughout those down times at some point it was down by close to 30 percent. Um, they then saw dramatic increases once things bounced back and started going up again. So they lived through almost like a recession level downturn within three months. The second thing was that um, we have other, the reason we have other asset classes, so for our real estate, for instance, we vetted it against seven recessions going back all the way to 1971. And the real estate asset class has a very interesting feature, which is it's much more resilient even during the downtimes. Because think about it, if you're renting a property, um, if there's a down, is there's, there's an economic downturn, you want to keep the lights on. You want to, it's one of the expenses that you want to make sure you can cover. And people who used to own their own properties, sometimes they sell and come into the rental game as well. So in some cases, even during recessions, real estate will even increase. So it provided that stability that, you no, know, okay, you don't have to do only stocks. You can switch to real estate or you can do fixed income, which pays a fixed interest and also tends to do well unless things have gone really, really bad. Fixed income tends to remain stable. So having other stable options helped um, being able to understand why the market was moving this way. And we, we went extra in on explainers. We published articles. We did health calls. And that way we carried the users along throughout that process. And I think that's, that gives us a template for what is going on now because we also want to make sure that we kind of follow that same process of explaining, offering other options, and just encouraging people to kind of like just stick through this because it's, it's part of the game. There's, there's no market that goes up all the time. It goes up and then it goes down. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how we think about that. I also know that Rise is also a company that has had to deal with a number of testing periods. You've had to deal with um, regulators of all kinds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious as to how you've been able to steady the ship. For a company like yours, where trust is an important factor, what was, what was the message going into going to, to the team at the time when these things were happening? There's several factors that have helped in, in scenarios like what you described. The first is just being prepared. Internally, when we have conversations, you know, we, we understand this is a, reg, a real risk for every fintech company, regulatory risk. And right from day one, um, we, we had to answer a lot of tough questions about how to mitigate those risks. We've had uh, a great relationship with the SEC, um, you know, despite some of the very public um, issues or the things that have come out, um, they've never really been uncooperative as a regulator. So whenever we have conversations, it tends to kind of like, we, we always achieve like a, st a steady understanding and they give us directions. So this is the path to follow. Um, the other issue that we had um, where, you know, we had a regulator who 
put a freeze on our local accounts. Um, again, those were things that we were partially prepared for. Um, our operations had been set up in such a way that things like that would not have a lot of impact. And so we, were just, we just had to communicate that to both users. Internally, we were more ready for it. Um, also, there's multiple people, you know, there's multiple people involved. Um, there are things where we look at how much cash if something like this happened, how do we get access to liquidity? There are risk management procedures that you have to consider. But it's always a thing where, especially in our markets, you have to prepare for these kind of things. And that preparation comes from the inside. Um, so it's, it's not going to change. Um, we still know that as we grow and as things evolve, um, there's always going to, we always have to account for how regulators respond to this. We've tried to, we're building those relationships um, where they matter. And we're also internally making sure that our operations are stable and strong and prepared for these kind of eventualities. And, and so far, that has really helped us. The period when we had that freeze. There was some level of um, a run on, on people like just trying to withdraw. But again, because we knew that this is something that could happen, um, they were, we were always prepared for that and were able to handle that. So I've seen big companies deal with the same thing. Even unicorns deal with the same thing. So it's just a feature of our market. But yeah, we're, we're more than ready for it. I'm wondering how is rise growing within this within this because this this very this is for some other businesses it may not be, they may not be as hard a crunch but this feels like one of those things that is a hard crunch for businesses in your line and i'm wondering how are you how are you growing within this context that's a very good question so it's something that we're still obviously dealing with it's it's our current reality um so none of the answers that i'm giving right now is like a finished um thing um, but the, the first thing is we, we've always um, taken the approach of recessions happen, right? Um, I don't think that uh, anybody who has like interacted with RISE um, from when we started up until now has always heard us talk about this. We even from day one, we looked at what are we going to do and how are we going to manage our investments even during recessionary periods. Um, and so the asset selection that we have, the way we build, you know, so our, our, our real estate portfolio, the reason we don't carry debt on that portfolio is because, you know, those are the kind of things that create a problem for you during recession. Debt costs rise, liquidity crunch, you have to make certain payments. We've, have, we've largely avoided things like that because we know that recessions are a reality. We've selected assets that, again, perform very strongly um, during recessions. So the equity markets are there, and we're even excited to go in and buy more as they go down because we understand that it's a long-term game. But other assets that we have are all designed to give you some level of protection. So keep in mind that, yes, on existing users, there is that worry that, oh, my investments are going down, but also they are safe safer, let me not say safe, because every investment has its risks, but there are safer investments and more stable investments that people who are even invested in other places or have money in other places are still looking for, right? So even now, there are assets that we have that are much more um, favorable for a recession period. And that has helped Rise also say, you know what, this is a, a safe place to invest. And so people are still coming in. Um, beyond that, we also know that the, the, the approach we've taken with our products, like the questions you were talking about that we asked you, is because we, we wanted people to understand that investing is not just, okay, I, I put my money in today and you know something is going down, I, I withdraw it. You have to think about it as a long-term journey. Yeah. So some people will inevitably, you know, because there's stuff going on, withdraw their money, try and sit on it. But if you think beyond the moment and that knee-jerk reaction, and focus on your longer term journey, you realize that, well, this is going to come, but at some point it will go, right? But if I'm sticking to my plan or if I'm investing for a long range uh, plan, then this, does, this is just a temporary blip. So um, people like that are going to stay, right? And, and so our goal is also as a business, how do we make sure that more of our users are people like that? So that's, that's, that's a question that, again, we're still, we're still dealing with. But so far, our numbers show that um, majority of our users understand, yes, the markets are down, but they, are seem, they seem to be also open to the idea that, yeah, this bounces back. And so some of them are even funding more. So that shows that whatever we've been telling them, I think, I think they are, they are they're listening. Yeah. While you were speaking, I was just thinking of how 
insane it is. You're acquiring users for what essentially is a long-term investment. Think 10 years plus. Mm -hmm. And you asked them to save today. I <laughs> said, <laughs> 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 give money today and collect. I was like, bro, I, like, it's insane. I don't even know how you guys do it because the business are able to trust you with 10 years of, 10 years of their lives. <laughs> if you ask me why Rise exists, period, um, it's because we want to make wealth creation easier, right? Um, we want people to, you know, by the time you, you stop working, you know, have... 500k dollars, have 400, 450, you know, the kind of money that would help you to continue to live well in most places in Nigeria. Um, if, you're, if you even get to like a million and beyond, even better. And those kind of uh, long-term wealth building doesn't happen in a flash, right? So um, even within our markets, we know that, yes, it's tough to tell people um, to play the long game and to trust you to play the long game. Um, but so far, those of those of our users who have really taken the time to study our business model will know that everything about the company, uh, everything about the way we operate, the way we build, um, is designed to make us resilient for that long term. It's a more tricky balancing act, so that means we can't just go out and just you know acquire users at you know at 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 scale. At, at scale. We have to be very careful about the channels we advertise and the kind of users that we that we pull in. Um, but again, from what I've seen of our numbers and also the conversations we keep having with our users, um, we are capturing those people who align with that. Everyone in Nigeria wants to create wealth, but, but everyone, they, there's two major ways people go about it. One is they, I need quick returns, um, which has proven over and over to not deliver anything useful. Um, and then there's the other people who are like, I'm willing to take the longer approach because it works. I mean, there are people in RISE today who have maybe traveled abroad, who have done grad school, that really started with us in the last two years. And because they stuck with this, they've actually been able to do the next step or, or actually unlock the next step of their own journey. So um, there's something Y Combinator says, which is that um, if you want to scale, right? So we're talking about zero to scale here. You have to start by doing things that don't scale. Things that don't scale, right? yeah. So for us, things that don't scale have involved, you know, having, we have an investment community um, and every day we, we basically do a lot of financial education, answer a lot of questions, um, try and give people like a lot of context around the markets, right? Whether it's through our articles, we've had like office hours, come in and ask us questions because it might be a slower way to go about it. But the first thing it does is it gives people the right mindset. When they have the right mindset, sticking to a long term investment uh, plan, you know, is no longer as challenging. So that's that's some of the ways we've done. But um, still on that scale approach, we've also like now we've started doing like more high level marketing. We've we've tried to also think about how to move beyond. So now we're in like, you know, Lagos, Abuja and all the rest. But we're also looking at how do we move to um, serve business customers, right? How do we move to serve H&Is um, that, because our products, yes, it, it's tailored for, H&Is can use it, but we've not mainly marketed and tried to build certain features that speaks directly to them. So we're starting to do that. Um, we're also looking at other markets beyond just this one, because at the end of the day, um, no matter where we've gotten, we know that there's always more growth out there. Mm -hmm. And for us, what's important is, are we speaking to the right kind of users who have the right mindset um, so that when they do come into our, um, our product, they will actually use it the way we know um, it should it should work, um, not just coming in and, and, and just and then floating out almost immediately. Mm. So it's tougher, but but so far it's working. All right. Um, I'm curious. You talked about um, now trying to reach out to HNIs, and I'm aware that I'm, I'm now I'm trying to connect to wildly unconnected things. But let me know if my if my conspiracy theory is correct. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also aware that Rise did a rebrand last year. I'm wondering if the the move to now acquire businesses as as users and HNIs was part of the thought process that went into the rebranding. Yeah, I, I can just answer that very quickly. Yes, it was. Um, so the, my conspiracy theory was correct. It, it was correct. We always knew that the core demographic that Rise um, would try to unite is the middle class Nigerians 
and the upper class, so the H&Is. Um, and, and then the business case is more so you know, around liquidity management. It's something that was we realized from talking to our existing customers. They're like, oh, my business would want to use something like this. But when we did the rebrand, we knew that we wanted to also start speaking to people at the upper, upper point of the pyramid. And the, the, the idea of like shaping the brand or simplifying the brand the way we did is also partially to reach that audience. I know that for businesses in your model, uh, of, in your line, uh, AUM, Assets Under Management, is the uh, is not star, is what you... And I'm, I'm curious as to if there have been any um, strategies that you've used to drive increased AUM at, at Rise. I'm trying to phrase it in such a way that I don't give too much away. Um, about you can give me a word. Give it to me when we're done. Yeah, <laughs> some some things we'll, we'll, I'll share more with you when when we're done. But um, you guys can meet me in private for um, <laughs> to give you the lowdown of what. Okay, I, I'll charge. I'll charge you. I'm telling you up front. Charge you. Thank you, USD, for advice. But but, but I think th what we've tried to make obvious from day one is so. What's AUM looking for? It's looking for stable um, returns. Yes. Stable um, and adequate returns. And the, the primary thing we've tried to make clear is that um, we have all the ingredients to deliver these returns for you. The first is um, we have probably out of every company in our space, we have the most global reach. We are registered with the US SEC. We have come entities registered in other jurisdictions. Um, the idea being to make sure that wherever returns can be generated, um, in a, in a, so you always want to balance risk and return. But wherever the best returns can be found, pretty much globally, rice can get you there. So right now, there's a lot happening in India. We're already having conversations about making sure that people can invest in some of those opportunities. But we do US, we do Canada, we do UK. Um, we do real estate, we do fixed income across multiple jurisdictions. The idea is that wherever you want to get to, we can get you there. And so even for H&I's, RISE makes perfect sense. But the second thing is that we, we know that we try and take a level of objectivity. So most uh, fund managers, most investment companies that also are competing with us for AUM, they take a very, you know, some of them invest in treasury bonds, some of them invest in, in, in markets, but they take a very, um, for lack of a better word, subjective approach to generating returns. Um, RISE looks at the metrics that correlate with better performance, right? You know, what is the, 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 the size of the business or what is the size of the opportunity? What is the value? What is the, the cash flow of these assets versus the risk involved? Mm -hmm. And then we kind of wait towards the assets that we know are going to do well. And, you know, there have been opportunities that came to us. Oh, yeah, it makes 14% annual returns in dollars. But the risk involved didn't make sense, right? So we have risk models that provide a more objective way of selecting assets. So again, that is something that anybody looking to looking for where to put in their money, once they hear that and they actually ask us questions and they see how our investment decision works, they know that oh, this is a better place to put in their money. So there's a few other things that have helped us kind of like grow our AUM quickly. And now um, what we're doing is essentially like refocus, oh, well, at this moment with our, our new campaign is refocus on the fact that, um, so our campaign is called Defy Gravity because you know, things like recession or the general macroeconomic environment, um, they, are, they are a gravitational force pulling your money down and rise um, because we can um, find opportunities, you know, invest across the U.S. We can get into places that um, the average person here cannot. Um, we are able to deliver returns even in periods when it's very difficult for others to do so. So I, I, I think given all of that context, um, I can say, you know, I'm biased, but I can say that um, it's not a surprise that people are recognizing that, oh yeah, there's something different about investing with RISE versus investing elsewhere. And as long as we can keep making that clear, I think the, the growth will continue to come. It's very exciting for me to be hearing these things firsthand. Thank you so much for all the answers you've given so far. There's Appreciate one it. thing left. Okay. So for people watching, AK has invited me to best him in a game of FIFA. <laughs> I say best him because that's what I intend on doing. <laughs> that's what we'll be going to next. Yeah. I'll see you there. Awesome.
obviously. It's <laughs> an interesting mix. I should try this. Yep. So is Red Bull like your favorite mixer? Mm -hmm. If I'm drinking Glen, I'll go with Sprite. Yeah. If I'm drinking pretty much anything else, I'll go with uh, Red Bull. So. Let's, let's go. Okay. Did you say the Man City match from yesterday? Oh yes, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was, <laughs> that shit was brutal. I didn't even see it, but I I, I think I saw, I saw a few minutes because I was on the road. I saw a few minutes, but yeah, I, I, even the few minutes I saw, I knew it was... This is my opportunity to redeem, <laughs> redeem myself for my company. <laughs> that Henderson, I knew it. Dude was moving like. <laughs> oh no, I refuse to do football as slander. <laughs> okay. We're back. Put the word out. <laughs> <laughs> We're back up. We're back up. <laughs> Who said that? I'll try to remember. Idris Elba. <laughs> Put the word out. We're back, we're back down. We're back down. <laughs> uh, we're moving like the stock market. So. <laughs> up down, up down. I know we talked about like, you said there are times when you've, you've even companies that you didn't know. Right, because yeah, the feature yeah. algorithmical, algorithmical, hey God. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. That's my plan, that's my plan. I know, let's go. Oh, you wait till you scuffle. Oh, okay. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. No, the game is weird. The game is weird. <laughs> You have to answer my questions. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> so there's, there's a company called Transdyne. They manufacture airplane parts for okay. um, like different airlines, right? Mm -hmm. but because they're a parts maker, nobody really knows about them, right? But I found out that through the filters we use to select mm -hmm. stocks, they kept coming up, right? And they came up, their numbers were great. And I tried to understand what is it about this company that is making them so such a great option for, for investment. And it turned out that they had pre almost a virtual monopoly on the, on the Air Force, uh, US Department of Defense contracts. This thing is really working. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait. They, so that means that they're making like 10 billion a year that nobody can really compete with them on. Mm -hmm. So we invested in them and they've been doing like extremely well. And, they, and I'm guessing because since they're they are, they are monopoly... At this point, let's just <laughs> wait to this game finishes. I don't want to hear. Oh my I God. I don't want to hear. Ah, <laughs> that small touch saved you. Hey, come on, ref. I love that tackle. Maybe that's what Henderson is actually good for. Hey, almost killed my player. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. It's good, it's good, it's good. Uh, that was, that was, that was I, I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed it. I have nothing against them, actually. Um, I think there was a time I played FIFA with Don Jazzy online back in like 2012. Mm -hmm. So they just put out their FIFA ID and say, oh, who wants to play them? And we played. I shall beat him. <laughs> back when I still had to play. What am I doing? What am I doing? What was that? That was so fucking stupid. He's outside. Kind of he's outside. Is he's outside. I'm winning. He's, he's not. He's not. Oh. <laughs> I can have 10 goals in one match. In one match. Ah. 
What was I doing? Oh, we so far. Ah, uh, it didn't work. Wait, team, be this. My back. <laughs> this will be like fights. With so little time left. Are you are you letting me score and then you just I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. What I'm is not. this? I'm only like seeing if when I see the myself myself opportunity this guy will score. Full time. So we're going to a short time. Ah. What? If this end is in the draw, it's fair. It's fair. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we've both have, have, we've had like almost the same number of shots. It's a lot. It's, it's oh, a lot. No, not there. Time. Not there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Give him. He's going. Mm. I thought it was. Good. I thought that was going to be. A... How is that even possible? <laughs> Listen, I had no idea. What to say. I just did this for. I did it for the culture. Shoots and giggles. For the for the culture. Let's see. Let's see if it's, Let's see if it's getting. Okay, so Hachi has come and like dusted my life. I, I did it respectably. The center of my defense is shit. It's complete shit. I'm Wait, one of there's still people. time. <coughs> no, no, there's just like, there's just one minute. Uh, 14 was, was a cult favorite. 14 had the advantage of like, this up through balls. Once you played them, they almost always went through. So this is almost like oh no. I'm not playing penalties. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not playing penalties. I'm not playing penalties. He's celebrating. Oh god, this is funny. He's celebrating. This is hilarious because ah the game has finished. Just finished. Just finished. <laughs> and I told you, I told There's you. No point. Because I've actually I've actually given somebody a couple of goals in like one minute. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun playing. That was too good. It was good. It was good. This has been so much fun. Yeah, there you have it. As you can see, this one was just this was chaos. It was like the stock market. It was complete chaos. But it's been fun. It's been fun speaking with incredibly you. Incredibly good. Today we had AK Room of Rise Vest. Uh, see you at the next episode. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.